What is up, my friends? Welcome back for the start of a new series, this time The Mandalorian Season 2. I already saw the first season when it came out before I started the channel, but I'm looking forward to hopping into this one and being able to share it with you all this time around. And so, since I haven't watched any other Star Wars content on the channel before, I feel like I should let you know what I've seen, what I haven't seen, because maybe that will affect some context in this season, but I've obviously seen all the movies it is actually my favorite long-running franchise so I really enjoyed the first season of Mandalorian because it definitely had kind of that classic Star Wars feel to it and really loved the world that it created and reminiscing over ones that we already had been introduced before to in movies and other things but besides the movies themselves I haven't seen really any of the other Star Wars TV shows or anything like that not Clone Wars Rebels whatever else is out I'm not sure but primarily all my Star Wars knowledge comes from the movies and so that's what I take into this season of the Mandalorian and so with the first season as I mentioned I did really enjoy it it definitely had some ups and downs for me I didn't necessarily rate it as like perfect or the best Star Wars content we've gotten or anything like that but I definitely feel like it was a great starting point to build a series off of and so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with this new season of the show and the characters that we got introduced to and I'm hoping with this season that the story itself is kind of very focused because if I had any complaints about the first season of The Mandalorian I felt that at times it got a little too serialized and wasn't as focused on the main overarching storyline and so I'm hoping that we have a little bit more of that in this but I know the creators behind the show are obviously great and so I'm putting my trust in them to give a great product and so since this show only releases one episode a week I should be able to keep up with all of you since it's not possible to binge it all in just a couple of days and so hopefully we can enjoy the journey together have discussions and things like that and coming into this season Season, I don't really have any knowledge if any of you haven't watched my content before I don't look at any trailers or promotional material for things before I watch it because I like to go in as blind as possible not knowing anything the only thing that I saw at one point was that someone mentioned there was a rumor that potentially Boba Fett was going to be involved in this season but that's the only thing I've seen other than that it's all going to be fresh for me and so hopefully you guys enjoy watching along with me for this one if by the end of the video you did enjoy watching along for this episode definitely consider leaving a thumbs up always helps the video reach a lot more people helps the channel out appreciate your guys support looking forward to your comments this is like the only show I'll be able to really read comments for because there shouldn't hopefully be any spoilers out yet so I'll try my best to interact with some of you guys down there but if you'd like to watch along with me for the entire length of the episodes definitely check out my full length reactions on my patreon the link for that being in the description below and and so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into episode one. Very curious what happens with baby Yoda, because I would assume eventually he will be taken to people of his own kind, so that'd be cool to see them. Already starting off with great lighting, good sign. So yeah, that's how we left off at the end of season one, right? He destroyed the TIE fighter and then he just left. And so I assume that's right where we're picking up I'm here to see Gore Koresh. <laughs> Still as cute as ever, man. Gore Koresh isn't a name we heard last season, right? With Star Wars, sometimes it's a little tricky to remember the names, so I might have forgotten a few, because they're obviously not normal. <laughs> Baby's first fight, man. I'd put Baby Yoda up against any of them, though. I feel like I haven't seen these dudes in anything since episode six. I've been quested to bring him to his kind. If I can locate other Mandalorians, they can help guide me. I'm told you know where to find them. It's not cool to talk business immediately. Dang, are we gonna actually get some team up with a bit more Mandalorians this time? Man was somewhat of a lone ranger in the first season. I'm not leaving my fate up to chance. Nor am I. Oh gosh, dude, I did not see that coming right there. Somehow he's always finding himself in this situation. He's gotten out of worse though, so. Best car's value continues to rise. Give it to me now or I will peel it off your corpse. Tell me where the Mandalorians are and I'll walk out of here without killing you. <laughs> oh, dude, such a boss. I love the voice acting as well. <laughs> oh 
my no. gosh, that's a freaking great shot. Oh, here we go. Man is already going beast mode in the first few minutes. <laughs> okay, my guy. And then the music comes in right then too. That's freaking awesome. This opening is already dope. Bro, you thought you knew what you were doing. You never have the upper hand on this man. Promise you will not die by my hand. Now where is the Mandalorian you know of? Tatooine? I've spent much time on Tatooine. I've never seen a Mandalorian. Dang, throwing it back. It could be that person that we saw at the end of the one episode. Don't remember exactly which one, but we saw somebody walk up to a dead body, right? And it didn't show us who it was. Cut me down! That wasn't part of the deal. Oh, what an opening, man. That was sick. Big fan of that right there. I guess a lot has changed since you were last in most. Oh, thanks the force. Everybody just wants to see the baby, man. Can't blame him, though. As cool as Mando is, he's got nothing on him. If I can locate another of my kind, I can chart a path through the network of coverts. Where is Moss Pelgo? I'm told there's one there. It's not on any of the maps. I've never heard Moss Pelgo. That's new to me. I like this plot, though. Getting right off to some good stuff. R5! Bring the map of Tatooine! Now take your time. Hey, it's this thing. I don't know if it's the same thing that's in the movies, but it's the same type of droid. It's an old mining settlement. You still have that speeder bike? Sure do. It's a little rusty, but I got it. I have a feeling that this other Mandalorian, though, is not going to be a friend, because I feel like if it was, then it wouldn't be trying to hide so much. Great aerial shot right there. Big fan. Doesn't look like there's anything there, though. It looks just like a wasteland. Extremely small compared to Moss Eisley. Dang. I guess it's a decent place for somebody to hide out, though. It doesn't seem like you'd have any reason to come out here. I'm looking for a Mandalorian. Can you describe him? Someone who looks like me. <laughs> yeah, that's about as good as he can do. Especially because they never show other features of themselves. Bro, what the heck? There's no way that that's Boba Fett, but his armor looks pretty similar just because of the wear and tear on it. It also just was probably the way that the shadow was playing on it too. I've never met a real Mandalorian. Whoa, what the heck? I did not expect him to show up in this show. What the heck is that actor's name? It's on the tip of my tongue. Timothy Oliphant, is that what it is? But after he put that helmet down, it 100% looks like Boba Fett's helmet. Maybe he just picked it up from scraps. Where did you get the armor? Bought it off some Jawas. Hand it over. Around here, I'm the one who tells folks what to do. Take it off, or I will. <laughs> and we know that he is true to his word. I don't think this guy knows all the Mandalorian code not to disrespect it. Saved by something. I don't know what that is, though. I think it's lucky for Cobb, though, because I do not think that he would have won that fight. What is this, man? I don't know if it's just an earthquake or if it's, like, some creature. Bro, what is that thing, man? Whatever it is, it's huge. <laughs> Yo, what? Just freaking gulp that bantha in one freaking bite. My gosh. Maybe we can work something out. <laughs> Oh man, love that line delivery right after that. That was freaking awesome effects though, man. Whatever that thing was, it was way cool. Thanks to this armor, I've been able to protect this town from bandits. But a crate dragon is too much for me to take on alone. Crate dragon, that's what they're called. I feel like I might have heard that before. Was crate dragon mentioned in one of the video games, which I forgot to mention at the beginning as well, along with TV shows and stuff, but I feel like that might have been mentioned in the Bounty Hunter game. That very night, the mining collective moved in. Gosh, what the heck, dude? Surely you can kick these people out of the place without massacring them. I wandered for days. And then I was saved. 
<laughs> the Jawas always showing up at the right time, man. If you're not a droid or anything, that's definitely a good sight. The Jawas wanted the crystals. My treasure bought me more than a full water skin. It bought my freedom. Oh, so that's how it all connects right there. Interesting, because I guess when you're wearing that armor, you're probably treated like royalty everywhere you go. So that was a pretty smart deal he made. Made absolutely quick work of those fools right there. Dude may not be a true Mandalorian, but he's not too bad. At least with the blaster. <laughs> oh, yes, bro, that's fantastic. Is that the first time we've actually seen that rocket fired in any sort of Star Wars media? Because if so, it's about dang time. Those things remind me of the things from episode two. They belong to the Tuscans. <laughs> it's a galactic good boy right there. Hey, partner, you want to tell me what's going on? They want to kill the Kray Dragon, too. Hey, we might get a massive team up right here. That'd be pretty decent to see the Tuskins actually in a fight, because they're usually never focused on very much. It lives in an abandoned Sarlacc pit. There's no such thing as an abandoned Sarlacc pit. There is if you eat the Sarlacc. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did they eat it? That sounds freaking disgusting. And also, that's a pretty terrifying sight, man. That massive cave. Watch. The dragon will appear. <laughs> oh, man, that poor Bantha does not know what's coming for it. Oh no, dude. It just completely skipped the Bantha, went for the Tuscan. <laughs> Dude, that sucks, but that's also kind of satisfying the way they were just offering it up as a sacrifice. That thing looks freaking cool, though. Love the design of it. That's too big. It's to scale. Might be time to rethink our arrangement. Love the costuming and everything on him. Looks so cool, especially because we're getting lots of up-close looks. The Mandalorian is willing to help us slay the Leviathan in exchange for returning the armor to its ancestral owners. I feel like everyone should be in agreement with that. It's a pretty good deal if you ask me. If we are willing to leave them the carcass and its ichor, they will stand by our side in battle and vow never to raise a blaster against this town until one of you breaks the peace. I never thought they'd be capable of making a deal like that. Every other time I've seen them, they always just seem like absolute maniacs killing everything besides their own kind. Guess there's a little bit more to them then. We've obviously spent a lot of time on Tatooine and then visited a couple other places in the first season, but I'm hoping eventually we can get to like some more urban or cityscape type planets. <laughs> oh bro, that shot is sick. That cave is so intimidating, just the darkness and knowing exactly what's in there. He says it's sleeping. Let's get to work. Oh, I see. They're gonna set up a massive trap for it next time they lure it out. That makes sense. Maybe it was obvious beforehand, but just clicked for me now. Jeez, that's a massive freaking... What do you even call that? It's not a crossbow. It's like some Game of Thrones level stuff. No turning back now, man. It's coming for blood. Oh my gosh, that's so freaking sick, dude. Whoa, bro, we just switched to like an IMAX ratio? This is awesome. Big fan of this right here. Those Tuscans can certainly run, though. Dang, Ferric, it's going back in. Dang it, bro, I knew it wasn't going to go as they wanted. And if it goes back in, I feel like it's going to be too difficult to kill it. thing is gigantic it now looks like a freaking dragon oh gosh i did not expect that <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> this is freaking impressive from a filmmaking standpoint for just episode one of a TV show. You can definitely tell they got some budget on this. And I love that they extended the aspect ratio for this scene. Really adds to that feeling of size. I'm still willing to bet that that didn't actually kill it. I don't think it's dead. Me either. Holy crap, man. That thing is actually a smart animal. Freaking just started picking them off from the sky. Bro, how did they get that thing looking so realistic, dude? Anytime something looks that, like, sharp for CGI, which I assume it is, that's, like, next level work. I've got an idea. Get its attention. Set the bantha in. That's definitely the way to do it, though. You get that thing inside of it and it blows up, it's game over. What's the plan? You're gonna take care of the child. What are you gonna do? I don't know, but wish me luck. <laughs> oh no, just freaking sends him flying. Ruthless, man. Dude was doing a good job helping, but his work's done. He was kind of freaking close. I know he got out of there though. But mission accomplished. He got the Bantha in there. Oh no way, dude. He actually went in there with it. It's next level bravery. And that shot too, bro. Holy crap. That is epic stuff, man. That's got to be the grandest scale of anything this show has done so far. And it looks freaking fantastic. I know I mentioned how I wasn't a fan necessarily of how, like, super serialized the episodes got in the first season. But if they have this kind of, like, grand scale and intensity, I wouldn't mind it as much this season because that was really impressive work from a filmmaking standpoint. I hope our paths cross again. And you tell your people I wasn't the one that broke that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yo, did they just find Wilson from Castaway? I don't exactly know what else it was supposed to be. Oh, bro, that is a new face. I do not recognize him. Ah, uh, nice. John Favreau was back for directing that episode. He did a fantastic job. I definitely can see why the creature looked so good in this, the crate dragon, since he's obviously had experience with that stuff in his films. Definitely a pretty explosive first episode, though. I quite enjoyed it. And yeah, for Pedro Pascal just being a voice and not really a face, since the Mandalorian's always got the armor on, he does a great job in conveying just these subtle little bits of emotion that I really enjoy. And I'm guessing that Timothy Oliphant is only going to be in this episode and he was just kind of like a guest cast member, but it was still cool to see kind of like a recognizable face. Since I'm so used to watching two episodes a time at a time for the other shows on the channel though, it's definitely going to be tough waiting in a week between things but as long as the episodes are worth it it's not too big of a deal definitely hoping we get some more baby yoda plot in episode two though he was definitely kind of in the background in this one because there's still so much mystery around him so there's a lot of opportunity to get some more story from his character definitely quite the thrilling episode man loved that final battle sequence with the crate dragon i mentioned it to death already but the effects were just top notch it's amazing the quality that shows that air on streaming services now bring us because this is something that you would never even dream of on a cable show years ago. So Disney is definitely being willing to make the show look as good as possible, which I appreciate a lot, especially with something as big as Star Wars. You need to have something that really captures your attention because the expectations are obviously so high, as are mine. And I think sometimes that's why I'm a little bit critical of some things of season one, just because of how much I love the franchise. I just expect so much and I 
I'm so invested in that world that every time I watch something in that universe, I really want something that delivers on all fronts. And so really had a good time with this episode. Looking forward to what we get through in this season. I'm sure that there's going to be some pretty impressive stuff if this is just episode one. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed watching along with me for this one. Don't know how much there is to analyze per se story wise. I don't know if he's going to be on Tatooine for the next episode or if he's going to head off again somewhere else but definitely interested to see what happens and if you guys enjoyed the video definitely consider leaving a thumbs up always helps it reach a lot more people and helps the channel out appreciate your guys support as always looking forward to seeing you all for episode two next week and so until then i'll see you all later peace